Well, by now you've seen the title. What if I told you you could balance six hormones in seven days? Yeah. So you better tune in (laughs) because that's just too appealing to turn down. I'm Deborah Atkins and you're listening to Flipping 50 where I address your top struggles and concerns that most of all, we hope to inspire you that aging can be oh so different and oh so much better than what we might have seen in the past. I share what to eat, how to move and how to change your mindset often about what to eat and how to move so you can have the energy and vitality that you want need and to serve in this second and better half. Cannot wait to introduce you to my guest today. So she is definitely speaking the flipping 50 language and on the same track as many of us are looking for answers. She was, she found her own and then decided to share them with others. So let's not waste another moment. My guest today is Robin Nielsen. She's a functional clinical nutritionist and women's hormone expert, specializing in hormone balance to help women grow younger, no matter what their age. She supports women in midlife around perimenopause and menopause and women with PCOS naturally. Robin has helped thousands of women take charge of their health so they can feel more vibrant, confident, and sexy. She is past president of the National Association of Women Business Owners, Silicon Valley Chapter, and past president of the National Association of Nutrition Professionals, and has been featured on the CBS television program, Eye on the Bay, CBS, showcasing her life-changing women's retreats. Women or Robins, thanks so much for being here. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you're welcome. I'm tripping over my own tongue there because I am so excited to dive into all of this. First of all, you are very clearly a leader, not just in your field, but of all women, which I find so very cool. So, um, so so honored that you're here with me today. And I just want to point that out for listeners that that usually means you're sometimes standing up against resistance or swimming upstream, willing to to say the tough things and do the hard things and put your hand up when maybe somebody else isn't doing the job and saying, I'll do the job. <laughs> yeah, that's what headed me towards hormone hell. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there we have it, right? What's your story? (laughs) I'm a yes girl, right? Yes, Mm. yes, I'll do it, yes. You know, you've heard that expression that goes something like, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Yeah. Well, that's how it went for me. And, um, you know, I just have a hard time saying no. And yes, I really like... Oh my gosh, I'm I'm not sure where this comes from, but I really, really love for women to stand in their, you know, in their empowered glory. And maybe because I felt I needed that. But um, I've certainly loved my journey over the years with um, leading organizations and then, you know, finding my my own way for sure. And yeah, I, I think that um you know, I my mess is my message, as you may be able to relate to. So much. So let me back up to a second, just clarify. So were you always in, in women's hormones and or a nutritionist and that was your work or was there something else that came before it? There was something else that came before it. I always knew though that I wanted to do something around healthcare. So that was kind of my passion when I was in college, but I didn't quite know what it was. And so I ended up working with my husband in the family business and we ran a large printing company for a number of years. And it was it was there that um, you know I really like figured out this is you know this lifestyle is not working for me. It was so stressful. We had you know forty employees. We had a, we had a very large company, and um, it kind of you know it, it kind of woke me up to the fact that I had to figure out how to take better care of myself. And um, at the time, my father's doctor was an endocrinologist who was um, functional or integrative before her time. So this is like 30 years ago. And, um, 
And so my father gave me her her book, and um, and I started reading her book, and I, and she had all these case studies in it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is me. How did she solve this problem? And then I go to the next case study, and I'm like, well, that's me. How did she solve this problem? And so it was through that that I really decided, oh my gosh, you know, it's time for me to figure my stuff out because I kind of crashed and burned. You know, I just got so burned out and I really had like this mini meltdown where I um, was driving home from work one day and I just, I just remember just, you know, breaking down in tears and sobbing and just feeling like I wasn't doing a good job at anything. Like I didn't feel like I was a good mom. You know, I was always leaving work on my desk. So I didn't feel like I was doing a good job at the office. I felt like I was letting my husband down. And of course, you know, the very, at the very most, I was letting myself down or the very least. And so I vowed right then and there to figure my stuff out. And, um, and that's when I started on this journey. So it's, this is really a second career for me. And this is, uh, this is my, my 17th or 18th year of really focusing on women and their hormones because I, you know, I resolved all of my crazy health issues. And so I, it's so funny. I never thought I would be teaching this, but you know how it is when we, <laughs> when we women like figure out something really cool, it's like, oh gosh, you know, every other woman needs to know about this. So that's kind of, you know, how I got started. I love it. I love it. Okay. So after 17, 18 years, what's the number one mistake you see women making when they don't feel well? Mm, the number one mistake is that we're giving our power, our power of healing to someone else. Mm -hmm. We think that healing our bodies is outside of us. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for that magic solution, whether it's a diet or whether it's some sort of pill for energy or for whatever it is, we're looking outside of ourselves for the answer. And unfortunately, or fortunately, we have, you know, all of the tools and resources we need within ourselves to completely heal our bodies because chronic health conditions like you know, anxiety, weight gain, fatigue, those are all resolvable. Um, you know, even things like, you know, things that we think that we need medication for, you know, high cholesterol, um, uh, acid reflux, right? I had receding gums. I had to use special toothpaste because the enamel on my teeth was, um, was you know, going away. And um, so I remember when I was like, you know, 19 years old, having to take my Sensodyne toothpaste with me to work in Yellowstone National Park. And what I didn't know at the time was that I could completely heal that. Like who knew? And so, you know, when I was in my 30s, um, well, actually, was it late 20s or early 30s? I could actually bite into an ice cream for the first time in my life, like an ice cream cone without pain. It was unbelievable. So I I regrew enamel on my teeth. My gums completely healed. I no longer had receding gums. You know, the the really like rough elbows that I thought was just because I didn't have the right lotion. <laughs> well, it turns out it wasn't a lotion issue at all, right? It was a totally Says total every issue. woman <laughs> with 36 lotions underneath her sink, right? Right. Right. So it was it's that sort of thing. You know, any chronic health condition is almost always you know, completely solvable by yourself, right? It doesn't take anybody else. It doesn't take, you know, uh, somebody else giving you something for that. It's it's really in your hands. And I think that's the number one mistake that we do is, is really giving that power to someone else. Well, you had me at receding gums. <laughs> I mean, yeah. seriously, because I'm thinking every time I go to the dentist, they're wanting to measure. And I'm like, let's just not, let's just not measure right. today, right. Please. Please. Yeah, please. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So every woman here is like, why are you not asking her the question? Because I came here for the title. Um, so I'm going to ask you the big one right now. What six hormones are the most important to pay attention to? Oh, I love that. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because I get so excited. So that same endocrinologist that really got me started on this path, I ended up becoming um, a practitioner under her. She, you know, she just was a crazy, amazing mentor for me. And and what I learned is that, you know, as women, we know hormones. 
We do because we have this whole hormonal thing that goes on, you know, every single day of our lives, but we just don't know what to do with them. And so we're really busy paying attention to our sex hormones because that's kind of what society has us looking at. That's what we actually measure for some reason, which is crazy, right? We measure our progesterone, our testosterone, and our estrogen. And, you know, in my um, Facebook group, you know, the ladies are posting those numbers on a regular basis. And what we don't realize is that our sex hormones are way downstream of yep. our major hormones. And so our sex hormones are kind of a result of how we're living our lives. So if our sex hormones are out of balance, guess what? Right? We're we're too stressed out to make babies. <laughs> it's kind of what it comes down to. So if you're not making enough of your sex hormones, you're just too stressed out. And I call those stressors, they're, you know, we might know them as root causes. And I, my, the expression I use is hormone deal breakers, right? There are things Mm. that are causing your hormones to be out of balance at a much higher level. So the six hormones that are really important to pay attention to are cortisol and insulin. And -hmm. those are our biggies. And then thyroid, right? Now, thyroid, you might say, well, that's not a hormone, but your thyroid produces a bunch of hormones. And, um, and that's your mid hormone and then, and then your sex hormones and then testosterone, estrogen and progesterone, right? So, so what I, you know, teach is we have so much control over our cortisol levels, which is our really our, it's our daytime hormone. Cortisol is our daytime hormone that gives us that great energy throughout the day, but it's also our stress hormone. So if we have chronically elevated cortisol levels, then you're going to have chronically elevated insulin levels. And insulin is the hormone that is produced by our pancreas that gets blood sugar into the cells. Because if you're running from the tiger, (laughs) you better have some fuel to run, right? So that's kind of that's kind of the hormonal picture that I think is really important for us to understand is that when we get a better handle on our cortisol and insulin, kind of our stress levels and our blood sugar management, then, you know, our sex hormones come into balance. So love it. Yeah. And I think you're right. I mean, every woman out there is like, "What?" Like okay, I'm going through menopause and everybody's talking about estrogen, 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 or my testosterone, and that's why I can't gain muscle. And so the truth is that your cortisol and insulin have been there ever since, but it's like those sex hormones maybe are the reason they're changing, the reason that they come to the head of the class, like as the, you better pay attention to me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's that's something that, you know, Western medicine isn't so good at looking at. We don't really have good testing in West, Western medicine to see what our circadian rhythm is throughout the day. Like there is no test, right, that we can run that says, oh, you know, our cortisol is definitely, you know, out of whack unless you do, you know, blood work throughout the day, which is a little tedious. And, and it's really hard, you know, well, here's the really ironic thing. I think this is so crazy is that we don't test insulin anymore. How crazy is that? Like insulin resistance yeah. is at the root cause of so mm-hmm. many health issues, but mm-hmm. we don't even know because um, it's not routinely tested anymore. It used to be, you know, a, a lot of tests used to be re- routinely tested, but now unless there's a diagnosis, your physician cannot run certain lab tests because it won't be paid for by insurance. So mm-hmm. now you get this tiny little uh, blood test done and you can't tell anything from it. It's really discouraging. Yeah. And I think so many times it's like the response to that was, well, we're not going to test that until like <laughs> there's a real issue, right? Like it's not important to do a bone scan until we think you have osteoporosis. So we can tell you that, oh yeah, you do. Like how, how helpful is that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's kind of a disaster. And, you know, I don't know that we've created the problem, but certainly our, our whole healthcare system is really designed 
you know, it's really designed by insurance companies. So mm-hmm. if, if we, if we want to know certain things, we have to take the reins and do it ourselves. Yeah, I so love that. And listeners, I'm going to link to a couple shows where we've actually like talked about and defined what is the difference between, say, functional medicine and Western trained and Western based medicine, and where you might want to start looking for who are you working with? How much is that helping you? And I think we all want to go to, well, is it covered by insurance? And, and yet, I think what we really want more than that is to be well, to feel well. How priceless is that as opposed to how much does it cost? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if if if, if you don't have a budget, you know, for your mm-hmm. health care, then then it, it's it's going to be almost impossible to figure, you know, your root causes out and you know, this is a whole separate podcast, but we need to have it. You know, mm-hmm. on spending a thousand dollars a month on health insurance, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> or spending a thousand dollars a month on you, right? On on mm-hmm. supplements and good food and appropriate testing, because um, yeah, I'm someone who like I I insure for the catastrophic, and then mm-hmm. I take that eight hundred extra dollars and I spend it on me, just those things. Mm-hmm. Love that, I love it, and I think. I encourage every woman who's listening to start asking, asking your friends, ask the ones who are thriving, how are they doing it? Who are they seeing? What are they doing? Because I think you'll probably find some common denominators there among your friends who are already maybe a step ahead. Robin, what are what are the next steps? So we've got a listener who maybe is exhausted. She's feeling like, oh, she's in the the middle of the spin cycle, so to speak. She knows she doesn't feel good. She just doesn't know how to get out of it or what to do about it. And maybe everything she tries has a side effect that's negative. What would you say to that woman who's listening, who's just so tired of being in this moment? Mm, Yeah, I can totally relate. First of all, um, that was me, and and I and I think that the you know the biggest aha we have to come to is that um, you know you can totally heal yourself, and you know my my seventeen years in practice has been all about helping women take charge of their health, so they can you know feel more vibrant, confident, and sexy, right? Like that's mm-hmm. that's what we want, so we can show up as the you know the beautiful being we are, and 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 I and all we need are the steps. You know, that's what's missing from pretty much, you know, every um, approach we try is that we really don't have the steps out of what I call hormone hell. Because <laughs> I was in hormone hell for so long. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to get out of this, right? I just want to, I have, I suffer from severe FOMO. So if I don't feel well and I can't do something, I get really angry. Like, you know, it's my fault. I'm stuck. Nobody can really, um, feel how I'm feeling. Like that's one thing about not feeling well is that it's a very lonely place. You know, you're kind of on your own, right? Nobody can help you out of it. And and I and I just really like from every cell in my body, I just hated that helpless feeling. But, you know, I think there's so much hope when you know that there's someone who can show you the steps. And a couple of years ago, you know, I wasn't sure how I could really serve, you know, when we started sheltering in place and there was this crazy um, virus out there that was really threatening every single person on the planet. And I thought, gosh, you know, what can I do? I don't know enough about it um, to really speak to it, but um, it just came to me that, you know, we need these foundational practices on how to take care of ourselves. And so I put together this program. It's called Robin's Hormone Reset. And I put together this program that, that is just a step-by-step on how to take care of ourselves and what it looks like. And the really cool part about the program that I created, and, and now over 8,000 women have gone through it um, in these past, it's been less than two years. We started in May 2020. And the results have been incredible. Like we have, um, you know, over a hundred testimonials, over a hundred case studies, you know, of women who were willing to actually be in my book of the transformations that can happen when we, when we have the steps to take care of ourselves, 
That's all it is. Like it's this really foundational stuff that maybe we've heard before, but we didn't really have the science behind why to do it. So this program seems to attract um, a lot of women who have been on this health journey for a while, but just have never been able to put all the pieces together. So good. It really, so good. yeah, it really attracts practitioners as well as women who have just tried to do it themselves, but haven't been able to figure it out. I mean, been to a lot of even functional practitioners because what happens is if you're not in some sort of program, and I'm sure, um, Deborah, you can relate to this, you really can't get the next step and the next step and the next step. You mm-hmm. know, otherwise you're just in our, you know, broken uh, healthcare model where you're just going in when you don't feel well. It's like, well, here's the next thing you can try. And then you can try this, right? Instead of helping us get to optimal health, which is where we all need to be and deserve to be. We don't want to manage chronic problems. We want to get well and stay well more of the time. So the Robin's Hormone Reset is a great place to start. It's super inexpensive. It, I mean, really, it's almost free. <laughs> because Confirmed. I've looked at your page and I thought, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's almost free. But the, <laughs> but the deal is, you know, at the time, we really wanted this to be for every single woman. For every single woman who said, yes, I want to learn how to take charge of my health, we wanted we wanted her to be able to do it. So that's why we priced it where we did and we haven't changed it. And we won't change it because we really feel it's just such a, a beautiful way to serve. Um, and I'd love to share just like some of the transformations that have happened, you know, when you kind of understand um, those steps. And um, and I just want to share too, like each day um, we do a different hormone assessment. So each day of the reset, you actually get um, a whole assessment for one of those six hormones. And you would be like just blown away by how, you know, most of what you're feeling each day is because one of those hormones is either too high or too low. Like who would have thought that being irritable right, was based on a hormone being out of balance. I love it. Yes. And I want you to keep going on that because I was about to beg. So it's much better if you just volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it's it's really amazing. So we, we learn about the hormones. We learn, I mean, you'll have a complete understanding of why you feel the way you do. And then you'll have some very clear steps out. <laughs> I call it out, mm-hmm. but very clear steps to take. And um, and I think you'll just be so amazed. You'll be like, oh, that's why people say to do this, you know, because, you know, they're not, they're not necessarily uh, things that were like, yeah, you know, I'm going to stop eating gluten. I mean, who wants to do that? Um, because we love our bread, right? But when I give you the science behind it, you're like, well, no wonder, you know, no wonder it's causing havoc. So I can share just a few like breakthroughs. Would that be helpful? Oh, I would love it. Yep, please do. Yeah. So, um, so let's see. So uh, a woman named Nazma, uh, she's so cute. She said, "Win, win, win." So um, she had uh, something called H. pylori, which is this bacterial overgrowth in your stomach that causes acid reflux and GERD and really makes your digestion completely messy. She totally cleared that up. She got off um, her her antacids, Nexium and Tums. Uh, she got off Miralax because she was constipated constantly. Um, let's see. I think Mir- I sorry about this. I think Miralax is for a constipation. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, she was, she started having regular bowel movements without it. She got off her Benadryl. She used to take it at night to sleep. I've heard many people do that. Um, and she tossed it. She's uh, her sleeping. She said, I'm sleeping and feeling like a rock star in the morning, vibrant, looking forward to the beauty the day has to offer. Um, she released uh, 14 pounds. I mean, this is the thing, you know, Deborah, you and I have talked about this where, you know, uh, weight loss is a side benefit of getting healthy. Mm-hmm. It's a side yes. benefit of getting healthy. It's not something that you have to solely focus on. 
And so, you know, she was able to get herself uh, pretty healthy in a very short period of time. And she just released 14 pounds. Huh. Right. And um, what was something else? Oh, just her energy. I played ball with my uh, three-year-old uh, son and she said, I actually initiated it. My energy is marvelous. So, you know, she said, um, these winds touch my heart. And, you know, she says, you know, t- ton of gratitude. Um, and then I wanted to share just um, a couple of other, like, because things that we don't even realize, you know, we talked about menopause and, you know, post-menopause, we have, if this were a video, you'd see I'm holding up zero hormones. We have zero hormones. <laughs> And, you know, we panic when we see that. We're like, well, no wonder I'm feeling so terrible. It's that old FLC, right? Feel like crap. But the deal is, is that you can actually feel well with low sex hormones. You can actually feel fine. There are many women post-menopause with, um, you know, zero estrogen, zero progesterone, and they feel just fine. So it really depends on the person and it depends how your cortisol, you know, your sweet adrenal glands and your insulin is doing. So Lisa said that um, her big wins were that she noticed her postmenopausal belly was shrinking. She was becoming more regular and her libido is, co- <clears throat> is coming back. And she said, my husband even said, um, oh gosh, I got cut off. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. And she just, she just was just saying how, um, you know, that she was able to go off her anxiety meds and, um, and a, a number of women in the program have been able to get off their anxiety medications, their, um, antidepressants. Uh, yeah, just so many meds, uh, the women have felt confident enough to work with their doctors to go off them. And I think, you know, from the work that I do, it's just, it's just a huge win because we know that meds were really only meant for a short period of time. And, uh, yet like that's the only option we have. So just, they're just so, I don't know, so many amazing wins. And I think that, you know, the biggest, the promise that we give is, you know, eliminate anxiety, lose weight and, um, boost your energy. And, you know, those are the biggies because those are the things that, you know, really kind of take us out. But then all the underlying things, you know, all the smaller things that I was t- kind of, that I was talking about earlier, like the rough elbows and the receding gums and things like that, that just starts to heal naturally. So yeah, so, so many wonderful outcomes of this program. I hope you can join. Yeah. You know, I really love what you said. And I think it was almost mic drop for today. Weight loss is a side benefit of getting healthy. It's not something to exclusively focus on. And tell me if you share this view or vantage point, which I think is when we chase that, it's like your hand, if you extend your arm out in front of your face and you hold your palm so you can see it, it's always going to be there out in front of you we're not going to catch up to it and there's no control. But if you do the right things, it actually, you're naturally, naturally attracting it. Absolutely. And well, and I think if you take the focus off of it, it's so important because Mm -hmm. what, what's most important, I've heard this so many times over the years and working with clients that they come to me because they want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Right. But when they start feeling better and their energy comes up, and they're living life again, the weight is really not as important. Like they, it's so funny, they kind of forget all about it. And so, you know, what I want to say is it's the, um, I know that we're running short on time, but it's like the hibernating bear syndrome that we talk about in the program, which is where your metabolism has just gotten so sluggish, right? That you're tired and you're fat. And so it's really a matter of waking up your metabolism, of fixing a broken metabolism. And that's, you know, really what this program is about. It's getting a little bit more scientific, but, you know, we can all relate to that. You know, we all know that our metabolism has to be healthy and happy if we want to feel well. And so that, you know, that's, I think, a big part of it is that, you know, our bodies go into this hibernating bear mode when there's just too many stressors on our plate, too many root causes. And so, you know, by joining this program, you're going to figure out so much of what's going on. I think it's going to help you so much. 
I so agree. And everybody, listen, I've got in the show notes the link that'll be flipping50.com forward slash hormone reset. And those words just run together, hormone reset. So if you can remember that, you're good to go. Otherwise, you're going to come to the show notes and that'll be flipping50.com forward slash hormone balance. And I'll put all of that at the end of the show as well. Robin, okay, while I have you here, I didn't want to let you get out of here with asking, without asking you the toughest question of the day. I think my audience members already know this one, but is there a question that I should have asked you that I didn't? I don't think so. I think that we really covered, um, we covered a lot today. Um, yeah, you're such a good host. Oh, well, you're so flattering. So thank you so much. Love the work you're doing. And clearly we are speaking the same language. So listeners, again, the show notes for today will be at flipping50.com forward slash hormone balance. The link to join Robin's program will be in show notes. Or if you want to jump right to it right now and you can only remember one thing, you're going to go to flipping50.com forward slash hormone reset. And those two words run together, no spaces. So listeners, it of course is your turn. Is there a question you wish I would have asked Robin? Please put it in the show notes. I'd love to hear from you. And then what are you waiting for? It's time for you to feel good in the body you live in. And it's time for us to start flipping 50 together. <laughs>